Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Schultz and I am the Education and Development Associate here at the Pets. So today I wanted to take you through the gallery and show you a couple of my favorite pieces. And we're going to start upstairs in the Pence Gallery's Learning Center. We're looking at a show called The Stories We Tell Ourselves, which has the beautiful paintings by Laurel and Gilmore, and also the wonderful sculpture by Liz Webb. And I'm going to take you to my favorite corner with their paintings and sculptures. So I know a few of you may have seen the show already, but for those of you who haven't, I wanted to take a closer look at some of the works. We are closed currently to the public until April 7th because of the coronavirus, so I'm hoping that I can share these works with you remotely from your homes. So first, I want to say that Eileen Hendren, who's the curator, did a really wonderful job. I wouldn't have thought to pair these sculptures and paintings together, but I think they work so well. So we're going to take a closer look, particularly at this sculpture by Liz Webb and this painting by Laura Lynn. What I really love about Liz's sculpture is how abstract it is, but also how detailed it is at the same time. She's wonderful at sculpting these figures with really long, extended limbs. And do you see the tiny book and pencil? This work is titled Listening for a Poem, and I think that's really great. Um, she also creates these figures that are very fairy tale-ish. So we have a woman with a bird head, and I think that creation of a fairy tale character works so well with Laurelin's paintings. I also love how this figure is looking to its right over towards Laurelin's painting. And if you look over at Laurelin's painting, the primary figure is looking to the left. So they're both kind of acknowledging each other in that way. Now for a closer look at Laurelin's painting. So I will say I don't know what the artist was originally thinking when she created this painting, but I'm going to tell you what it reminds me of as someone who was trained as an art historian. So when I look at this painting, it immediately reminds me of Greek mythology, um, kind of the arrows, the way that there's a three-headed woman, kind of reminds me of the three-headed dog Cerberus. But the way that Laura Lynn paints is amazing. You can see the glint on the gold chains on the woman's neck. You can see the sheen of the fabric that she's captured in this really detailed kind of curled pattern and then with tassels as well. And then the way that she's captured emotion too, it's almost like the three stages of pain. This piece is called Wounded and so we see a face in anger, a face that is kind of more stoic and resolved and then one that is crying. And then also we have these wonderful details in the background. We have beautiful white flowers um, amidst leaves with little hints of blue. And they kind of morph into these skull-like um, images, which again sort of serve as a memento mori, what we would say is a reminder of death. And so I think all of these things work together to sort of remind you of myth, of fairy tale, of other elements that Laurelin is pulling into this painting. I love too that these fairy tale themes that we looked at also carry over in the other works in the show. So these two pieces as well also remind me of fantasy or fairy tale characters. And I love again too that Liz's work and Laurelin's painting work so well together. We have this branch that Liz has sculpted that kind of carries over here into Laurelin's painting. So I think looking at this exhibit as a whole is really exciting. And hopefully when we reopen, maybe sometime soon, you'll be able to see some of the other works in the show. If not, we also have everything posted online, but I also want to take you downstairs and show you a few more of my favorites in the watercolor exhibit. So now we are downstairs in the main gallery of the Pence, where we have the watercolor show, which also continues into our community gallery. And this is a show that was juried by Sandy Delahanty and it has entries from people all over the United States, and the works you see here were picked by her as the final works for the exhibit. And I wanna show you one of my favorite pieces, which is this watercolor by Joanne Wilson called Mad Hatter Tea. I always smile when I look at this painting. I think it's so whimsical and fun to look at and very playful, and the way that Joanne has painted it too makes it whimsical. So you can look 
really close to the bunny and notice that she's created these really nice velvety textures by kind of letting the watercolors bleed together. The ear looks like you can see light coming through it, you can see the veins, you can almost feel the velvety texture of it. But then in the background, she has this really abstract, almost playful floral landscape. We have some bright flowers down here, and then in the back, she's let the watercolors bleed again to create this really beautiful orange backdrop. The bunny is also really cute because he's carrying a colander on his head with turnips or carrots and then some flowers and teacups. Um, I run the kids tours here at the Pens for our Art Smart school visits and one kid said it looked like shrimp so that always makes me think of that now and it makes me smile. But I love that this is reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland. A lot of people have mentioned Peter Rabbit when they see this painting. So I think it's fun when you look at a painting that makes you smile, but also reminds you of things that were close to your heart when you were a child. Thank you all for joining me for a tour of my favorites here at the Pence. I was really excited to show you Joanne's work along with Laurelyn and Liz's work upstairs. Stay tuned for a more in-depth tour of the watercolor show by our director and curator, Natalie Nelson. In the meantime, I hope you are all staying safe and healthy amidst the coronavirus pandemic, and I hope to see you all soon.